Hey guys, guess what? It's Angel. You're watching my latest video. Um, today I wanted to sit down and just talk about a couple things. Um, and also I wanted to let you know that um, my videos are just about me um, talking about my experience with my mental illness, which is, and that should be plural, my mental illness, which is uh, bipolar 2 disorder. Um, along with social anxiety disorder, borderline OCD, um, and PTSD. So that's kind of a lot, but um, in my videos, I basically, they're unscripted. So I just kind of start with an idea of what I want to talk about and it goes from there. Also, I just want to say that um, I'm just talking about my experience. Um, I don't give out advice. And I'm not a doctor, <laughs> so um, what works for me works for me. And uh, I cannot diagnose, I can't give advice on medication. Um, I can just say, this is what has happened to me. So I did wanna talk about, um, though, uh, just starting out, um, about my new psychiatrist and a medication that he put me on, which is basically Right now, I want to say life-changing for me because I've literally been in a depression for, um, I know in my videos I talk about a lot like that I've been in a depression for a year and a half. And uh, when I talk about that, you'll see videos of me like uh, from Washington State where I talk about being in a depression for a year and a half and then we moved to Utah, so I was there, and I talk about a, a, him being in a depression for a year and a half. And those two, vi those two time frames are separate. So, um, so in a span of three years, um, those coupled together. Um, looking back, like I have not really had a break from my depression. Um, for almost five years um, and I had to sit down and really kind of look at that over a time frame and when I sat down and looked at it I was really kind of shocked that I had been in a depression for so long now when I say a depression um, that doesn't mean that I was in bed for five years um, I want to say that I would was in bed um, for probably 70, 70 to 80% of that time over a span of five years. And uh, it was really hard. And when I say really hard, I, I, what I would probably categorize it as, it was really hell. <laughs> Not just for me, but for my family. And uh, probably even for my psychiatrist because I feel like he didn't really know how to help me like he was doing I think all that he could although he was in his late 80s and um, I don't know like what psychiatrists have to do like I don't know if they have to you know go to conferences to keep up on new meds I, I don't know um, and I, so I say that just to say that I don't know if he fully knew how to help me or if there truly wasn't anything else that he could do to throw at my illness. Um, the last thing that he did before I stopped seeing him was um, encourage me to go and do ECT. And I was on board to do that. I will tell you who was not on board to do that. Um, that was my insurance company. Um, they were like, no, uh, that is not, you know, we're not going to approve that. Sorry. My new, one of my new medications, I don't know if it's the Abilify or the, um, the medication for part, the Parkinson's medication. It, one of those makes me re really, really thirsty and I have a dry mouth. So... Sorry, I gotta take drinks while I'm talking to you. Um, so my insurance company was like, no, we're not doing that. So everything would have been out of pocket to pay. Um, and 
it's just a lot of money to do ECT. Um, and so we just, we just opted not to do it. Um, now with my, with my new, my new medication, which I just mentioned, it is Abilify, um, literally night and day, <laughs> a difference between night and day. Um, from the very beginning when I took my first dose to the next day and the next day, it was like a switch turned off or turned on in my head and the depression went away. And I have felt amazing since the, since the first day that I took that pill. Um, now, my psychiatrist is also lowering the doses on some of my other meds. And so maybe the Abilify coupled with that is, um, is helping, is, is working. Whatever it is, it's like magic. And I can't even like, I'm waking up at like 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to bed at like 10 or 11, and I'm sleeping. I am sleeping through the night, um, and I'm waking up at like 8 in the morning. Like that is, I like I would have never imagined that that was possible before. <laughs> and... And like I feel like I've got I feel like my I feel like I've been given life and so that's incredible to me so I wanted to talk to you about that um, along with that there are a couple other things that I wanted to talk about um, and I talked to my friend Megan about this um, we use this app called Marco Polo I don't know if you guys have heard of it um, but you can go to your app store and check that out. Um, it's basically just what it sounds like, Marco and Polo, but you can, uh, you can record a video and it goes like right to Megan and she can look at it and then she can record a video and it sends it right to me. Anyway, it, it's, it's a pretty cool app. So I, I sent her a video talking about this. Um, so the thing is, that now that I have this, and I still have brain fog, and that is because of the medication, and I expect that's never going to go away. So I'm not, my mind is not sharp and clear um, like it used to be, but I feel good. Now because I feel good, I feel like I can't fully empathize with the depressed me anymore. Um, it's like, because that switch, that depression switch went off and the good switch went on, it's like, I, I know that depression is there. I know that it can come back at any time and that's very frightening to me. But it's like I've pushed it away and I can't, there's a disconnect there now. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I'm describing that very well or if, or if that resonates with you. If you've ever, when you have that, that hypomania or that mania kick in, can you still relate to the depressed you or do you push it away? Because this is where people, this is where we get messed up and we say, I feel amazing, therefore I'm cured, I don't need my medication anymore and we stop our meds and then our lives go <laughs> our lives go to hell and shambles and then we realize oh we do need our meds because i've actually had that thought like i am well like this medication works it fixes things i'm well maybe i don't need you know maybe i don't need the meds but of course the medication is what is making me well so I feel that disconnect with my depressed, the depressed angel, if that makes sense. And it also, um, in a way, it frightens me because I have friends that are still in that depression. And because I'm disconnected from my depression, I feel like I can't fully help them in theirs. And that really scares me. So it's like I feel great but I still have to have a part, I still have to be able to connect. 
So I talked to my counselor a little bit about this, um, and uh, she didn't have a solution. We just kind of talked about it, and I sort of got it out. So I wanted to put that out there. Comment below if this makes sense to you, if you've had this happen or you've experienced this. I'd love to know your feedback on that. So um, I wanted to talk about that. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, and I've talked about this in therapy as well, um, and that is before I received my diagnosis, um, and I felt this way, but I felt actually more euphoric. Um, and I feel like, actually right now, I feel like I could be um, a little bit, oh gosh guys, sorry, I'm looking a little crazy today. I feel like I could be walking right on that line of hypomania. Like I'm teetering on feeling good, but being a little bit hypomanic. Um, and I expressed that to my psychiatrist, but uh, because we're not quite there, um, we're just, we're just going to keep going the direction that we're going. But um, because I'm feeling like this, it brings back memories to me of before I received my diagnosis and I was basically euphoric almost all the time. I mean, I would have bouts of um, where I would crash and I would be in bed for like a week and I'd have to cancel like all appointments and just tell people I, I was sick. Like, oh, I came down with something, I'm sick. Which I had come down with something and I was sick. It was called depression. But I didn't realize that that's what it was, even though I was being treated for depression. It's like it wasn't it wasn't connecting in my brain. I just knew I I just knew I needed rest and I was in bed, you know. So but I look back at that time and I'm really embarrassed by some of the situations that happened when I would be on the hypomanic side. And some of the situations that I remember, um, I'm really embarrassed and I wish I could go back or I wish I could go to the people that were involved and apologize because I had no control over what happened. And I'll give you a for instance, because it, like it wasn't ever anything like really horrid, like, um, like I never did anything that was really, really bad. What I'm talking about are like social situations, namely like my, so my husband and I were out one time. We were out shopping and we decided we wanted to go get something to eat. So we end up going to Five Guys. And while we are walking into Five Guys, um, I think we had placed our order or whatever. Anyway, we run into uh, someone that my husband worked with. And uh, they were peers. And um, it was he and his wife. And... Um, I was obviously on the hypo side because we were out shopping and that is what I do when I'm hypo is I go and spend money because that is my vice. I don't have any other vices. I don't drink. I don't like, I don't uh, gamble. I like, there's things that I don't do. Um, but shopping is what I do. So we were out shopping. Um, and we run into them, five guys, we get our order, we decide to sit down and eat together. And one of the other things that I do when I'm hypomanic is I talk. And I, it's rapid speech, and I don't stop talking. I hardly stop to breathe. And that's what I did <laughs> the entire time we were there. And of course, I don't realize it because I am in the moment and I am the smartest person in the world and I am the funniest person in the world. And 
my husband was mortified and we end our dinner and we go to leave and we get in the car and Chris was like honey you would not stop talking you just kept going and kept going and I was like what are you talking about it was fine they we were talking we were having conversation and he was like no nobody was talking but you and at the time I thought he was nuts I was like you are overreacting you're crazy like no everything was fine but now looking back at that situation I'm like oh my gosh he was totally right and I am so embarrassed I'm so embarrassed about that and I cannot go back in time and fix that and there are other situations where like I was out of control like I would confront people um, like at church I would confront people and I would just like blow up about little things you know um, and like just in social situations that I just thought that I was the smartest I was the funniest and I let people know that that was reality and looking back I'm like I was a big huge jerk and um, and people that I know from that time I that aren't in, really in my life anymore I think you know I wonder like is that why they're not in my life like is it because I was like a big jerk so I wish I could go back and fix those things I have a lot of guilt um, but the reality is like should I have that guilt I don't know because I didn't really have control over myself and that brings me to the last thing that I wanted to talk about and please leave comments for me because I need to know how you guys feel about these things mm -hmm. you know um, yeah just let me know so okay the last thing is because I'm teetering because I feel like I am teetering on feeling good and being hypo um, my husband sort of helps me along the way and this may please don't please don't think that or please don't look at my husband as a negative or as like a a bully because some sometimes people will think that and it's he's not he's trying to help me um, sometimes when we're in social situations if he feels like I'm sort of getting out of control um, if I'm being um, combative with people he has a way of grabbing a hold like just subtly grabbing a hold of my shirt or whatever and tugging on it like okay <laughs> like calm down or whatever you know and that's like a way that he kind of can like help me in social situations um, and sometimes like I get ticked off about it <laughs> because that is me that is the bipolar me is I get ticked off about it but I would rather him do that than than allowing me to go over the edge because if he were to allow me to go over the edge I'm jumping over that edge <laughs> because that's just that is just what happens so um so anyway those are some things that I've been thinking about that I wanted to sort of put out there to you and hopefully get your feedback so with that guys <laughs> I hope that you're having a good day. I hope you're having a good week and until we talk again, bye.